All right, guys, so I guess it's time to uh, hear Madonna's defense of the video that America thought turned all the little children out or you were grown. Probably thought it maybe piqued your interest and maybe even led you somewhere that turned you out. I don't know. If you want them folks, drop them comments below. But in the meantime, let's get to it. It's more than a statement. It's a way. <laughs> all right guys that's right so i'm back and uh ironically i feel like in the journey this has to be the most requested interview point blank period people been asking about it since i think i even heard the song justify my love i was doing a live yesterday i did a live uh yesterday to celebrate 10,000 plus followers. Shout out to everybody who is a follower of Empress. If you're not what you're doing, go ahead and subscribe, okay? But anyway, e even in the chat, everybody's like, oh, that Nightline, Nightline. I'm like, what in the world is some Nightline, okay? But anyway, I understand Nightline is a, a news cast that happened to be out in 1990 and uh, Madonna showed up and uh, according to y'all, she's about to show out. So let's get to it. <laughs> so serious right dum, 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 dum. this is serious news <laughs> and uh quick question is for a sawyer guy is he related to diane sawyer drop the comments below this is ABC news nightline reporting from new york forrest sawyer it has become virtually a seasonal affair the weather changes and there is a new madonna controversy this one is a video that mtv the popular cable music video channel refused to air <laughs> Instantly, a storm of questions arose. Is this a kind of censorship? And I thought MTV was supposed to be the daring channel, right? The oh, we for the youth channel. Even they said, uh, we ain't touching this. That is so interesting. Has Madonna finally gone too far? We'll look for some answers when I talk with Madonna in just a few minutes. And we will see, in its entirety, the video that has caused all this noise. But first. Oh, snap, my girl got that serious hair on. Y'all see that grin on her face? My grandma would call that a shit grin. Like, Madonna is ready to answer all the questions. I'm ready to hear it. Let's go. <laughs> the controversy itself with correspondent Ken Kashiwahara. Nudity, <laughs> suggestions of bisexuality, sadomasochism, mm -hmm. multiple partners. Finally, MTV decided Madonna had gone too far. Her latest video, Justify My Love, was banned. Great press already in the first, what, minute of this video. A lot of you guys said that uh, you hadn't even seen the video, you, that you saw, I guess, the video maybe on this Dateline interview. So I know you saw this part, you're like, oh, snap, again, like, black and white images, right? And if anything is going to, and not only that, the sound of the song is going to make me like, oh, what is this? Like, I feel like Madonna couldn't ask for any better publicity than this, right? I thought the Like a Prayer scandal was crazy. This one is even more crazy. Let's go. Now, for the first time, the channel ah, has decided to picture. take a pass on it's a cool. clip by pop music's hottest star. For six years, this star has turned shock into success consistently Jeez. pushing the outer limits of the outrageous of what is permissible what is not madonna has attracted millions of fans around the world and offended many in the mainstream like a now we didn't hear that little wax song but we did hear the daddy and papa don't preach song y'all remember that in the journey okay anyway papa don't preach still hard i still feel like top 10 top 15 at least okay anyway let's go Prayer, for example, was criticized by religious groups as blasphemy. And because of this video, Pepsi-Cola canceled the Madonna TV commercial, despite having paid her $5 million. I wouldn't yeah, turn I would if I didn't have all those old-fashioned values to rebel against. So. Madonna's career has been fashioned by her vision of sexuality, from her gyrations to her dress. Madonna underwear worn as outerwear became a fashion craze. Y'all taught me about the Madonna wannabes a long time ago. <laughs> Her serious endeavors tend to be sexually suggestive. Not Madonna it. urging, get out the boat. And if you don't vote, <laughs> you're going to get a spanky. While MTV has banned <laughs> Justify My Love. <laughs> Yo, I love this part of the video. It's like, it's like the stupor is over. It's like, uh, uh, wanting, <laughs> needing. <laughs> 
jukebox has decided to show it. We're not a censor, and we don't, you know, we don't position ourselves as a censor. Video uh, jukebox. I think we're very sensitive, though, to our audience. So whether she is deliberately provocative and in bad taste, or performing within the limits of artistic expression, Madonna continues to carve a career out of controversy. I mean, for real, how could she make a song called Express Yourself and not do it? Okay, I think that's why we hear from Madonna. We throwing up tens already. Let's go. This is Ken Kashiwahara for Nightline. And now the video. <laughs> they forced the shade. And now the video. So y'all saw the video at this point. So that's interesting. And again, let's make no mistake about it. Just like Pepsi, ABC is strategic was strategically using Madonna at this moment to bring in what? Ratings to Nightline. If they're going to air the video that MTV banned, what are they trying to do? Get a ratings blockbuster. <sighs> Let's go, y'all. Obviously, we are broadcasting it late at night, and we expect that only adults are watching. Get you serious. You know this video includes <laughs> graphic portrayals of sexuality and nudity. And when we come back... It's the eyebrows for me. Madonna. December 3rd. Yo, I was not even born yet. But I'm here for December, Sagittarius season. Let's go. <laughs> this is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Allstate. She is certainly controversial, but she is also certainly popular. <laughs> is this live right Madonna's now? Madonna's first four albums sold 48 million yeah. copies, and Forbes <laughs> magazine calls her the top-earning female entertainer this year. She ready for it. Let's go. Madonna joins us from Los Angeles. Am I correct in assuming that uh, if, uh, if an artist wants an album or, or a record to be very popular, you need to have airplay or usually you need to have airplay on, on MTV? Well, it's a, very, it's a very important marketing tool for an artist, yes. Facts. I mean, she ain't about to deny that. So should I assume then that you went through the ordinary process, as to say that you, with, with MTV in mind, put together your video and, and simply submitted to their standards committee thinking it would get the clearance that it always has. Yes, I did. Well. Dang, I didn't know MTV had a standards committee. Interesting. <laughs> you know that, or at least your record company knows that nudity is, is banned by MTV. They're not going to allow any. Well, let, I'm not so sure about that because when I did my Vogue video, there's a shot of me. Well, you can. I'm wearing a see-through dress, and you can clearly mm. see my breasts. Now they told mm. me that they wanted me to take that mm. out, but I said I wouldn't, and they they played it anyways. So I thought that once again I was going to be able to bend the rules a little bit. Well, you you certainly were bending the rules a lot more than you had in the past. Or did you feel that you were well within the bounds that you had been? Um, I guess half of me thought that I was going to get away with it, and that I was going to be able to convince them, and the other half thought, well. No, you know, with the wave of censorship being, you know, in the, the conservatism that is, you know, sort of sweeping over the nation, I, I thought that it, it was going to be, there was going to be a problem. Well, when you say you thought you could get away with it, a am I right? Have you sort of pushed the envelope a little bit with each one? With every video, you've, you've tried some new things, if only to be experimenting for your own reasons? Um, well, I think that's what art is all about, experimenting. But um, it is an express my artistic expression, and for me, a video is the filmic expression of the song. You know, a visual mm -hmm. that describes what the song is about. And you've got to listen to the words of the song. You know, it's about a woman who is talking to her lover, and she's saying, "Tell me your dreams. Am I in them? Tell me your fears. Are you scared? Tell me your stories. I'm not afraid of who you are." And so, mm. you know, we're dealing with sexual fantasies. We're fantasies and being truthful and honest with our partner you know and these feelings exist and i'm just dealing with the truth here in my video well let me tell you why i asked that because there are a lot of people in the industry who have said look this is one of the best self-marketers in the business we have never really seen anything like it and she knows how to push <laughs> right to that edge the ladies know they right okay <laughs> and this was a win-win for you if they put the video on you would get that kind of play and if they didn't you'd still make some money. It was all, in a sense, a kind of publicity stunt. Well, it, it may seem like it was a publicity stunt, and actually, I, I was very lucky, but I must say, I did not plan on selling this video. I just went in there to shoot I it and that. said, you know what, I believe I'm not going to think about whether it's going to get played or not. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm just going to do it. This is, this is what I, how I truly feel about this song. This is how I want to express myself. And when we gave it to MTV, um, 
we, you know, we asked them if, if they would play it. They came back a while later, later and they said no. I said, is there one scene or another that you specifically object to? And they said no, it's the whole tone. So we didn't really even have a chance to try to make nice. it viewable. They didn't, they rejected it completely. And so then I... That is so shocking to me. Like, wow, MTV rejected the video completely. Like, they didn't try to, like, do a little censor edit version. Like, wow, interesting. I had to think, you know, with my manager, you know, what next? What should we do? And we decided, hell, you know, let's let's sell it. Let's sell it like a video <laughs> single. It's never been done before. And, you know, the controversy just happened. It wasn't planned, but, you know. But in the end, you're going to wind up making even more money than you would have. Yeah, so lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> but the question that, that I think a lot of people are concerned about is, you, you say you go into the, into the studio, yeah. and you want to illustrate this song, and, you, and you're yeah. doing it in the way that you want. But yeah. they see a kind of trend where you are pushing the limits of sexuality. In this case, you have nudity and you have bisexuality mm -hmm. and you have uh, apparently group sex. And they're thinking that maybe you're... Pardon me? What are you saying? You're saying I'm pushing the limits of sexuality? No, no you're pushing I'm the limits not. of what's permissible. That okay. You, that you're carrying it a little further each time. And I guess what people are asking then is where is that line? Where do you finally say, okay, this well, is far enough? That's a good question, but then I would like to address the whole issue of censorship on television. Where do we draw the line in general? I mean, if well, you MTV... Can't, you can't go that far yet. You, you, first, you have to tell me where you draw the line. Well, okay, I draw the line in terms of what I think is viewable on television. I draw the line where, with violence and, and humiliation and degradation, okay? And I don't think any of these issues are, um, are evident in, in my video. That's where I draw the line. That's what I don't want to see. But I guess that then, then one woman's art is another woman's pornography. I'm thinking of the Express Yourself video. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are images of you chained. And there are yes, images of you I'm crawling chained. under a table. And there are a yes, lot of people yes. who are upset by that. Okay, I'm chained myself, though, okay? No, there wasn't a man that put that chain on me. I did it myself. I was chained to my desires. I crawled under my own table. You know, there wasn't a man standing there making me do it. I do everything by my own volition. I'm in charge, okay? Degradation <laughs> is, is when somebody else is making you do something against your wishes. Boop! She said that, okay, all right? Like she just said she, she chained herself, okay? She chained herself to her own desires. Let's go. We gotta say I'm bossed up. Ooh. <laughs> so is, okay. I understand. Okay. Is the expression then of sexuality so long as it's two consenting adults? Absolutely. Any form of sexuality all right on television? Well, then I would like, okay, first I'd like to say I don't believe in censorship of any kind, but then I would like to say that I believe in labeling. And I, so that what I, would, I would believe in some kind of, you know, warning label um, or some kind of label that would say to adults, you know, after a certain hour we're allowed to, you know, play these kind of adult-themed videos, you know. But then, okay, so I've dealt with sexuality, but I also think that we should also have categories for other issues that I think are not, um, necessarily good for 10 year olds to watch okay I mean I think MTV should have their you know their violence hour and I think they should have their degradation to women hour and then we can have an hour where we deal with <laughs> adult shade. sexual themes but you know if we're gonna have censorship let's not be hypocrites about this not, let's not have double standards you know mm -hmm. I mean why is it okay for 10 year olds to see you know some someone's body being ripped to shreds or or Sam Kinison spitting on Jessica Hahn why are we going to deal with these issues? Why is that okay? Why do parents not have a problem with that? And, but why do they have a problem with two adults, you know, two consenting adults displaying affection for each other, regardless of their sex? Madani, you've raised about 30 important questions, and I think we ought to get, get at those when we come well, I back. I only have a few minutes. So. We're, we're going to come right back after <laughs> we pay. She's so like, y'all owe my time. Okay, let's go. Get some bills here, and we'll explore those questions in just a moment. Madonna, I wonder if you were being facetious a moment ago. You said despite your concerns about violence and degradation to women, maybe MTV should consider having a, an hour for violence and an hour that displays degradation to women, despite the fact that it's broadcast right into people's homes where their children could see it. Well, I'm saying we already have these videos that display degradation to women and violence that are played 24 hours a day, but yet they don't want to have a video playing that deals with sex between two consenting adults. So I'm saying... You know, why, where do we draw the line? Why is this, why is this good for a 10-year-old to watch? And why is, it, why is it? And I guess I was being sarcastic, you know, to say, look, give me a chance. You know, let me 
have my slot, give me a warning label, warn parents so it doesn't take them by surprise so that they have a chance to take their child away from television, but also warn them about violence and warn them about that's you fair. know, scenes and videos that, that depict degradation to women. But you, you, know, you know how very hard it is for a parent to control the child having access to TV, and they sit there and they watch MTV all day long. Now, yeah, would okay. you, if you were in that parent's position, and it was your 10-year-old, your 11-year-old, would you not be worried about their seeing this kind of stuff? Well, personally, I wouldn't be worried about it, and this is why, because I think that sexuality is something that Americans would really rather just sweep up under the rug. And I mm. think that if my video provokes an open discussion, you know, maybe kids will go and ask their parents these questions, you know, if it provo provokes an open discussion about sex with their parents, I think this is a really good thing. Okay, but Madonna, you have to help me here. When, when a 10-year-old sees mm -hmm. you chained to the bed or sees your boyfriend bound up and another woman comes by while you're there, <laughs> Maybe you, no, you, know, you know that that's a fantasy, and you know that, that other people are, are able to deal with all kinds of sexuality, but a 10-year-old is going to get awfully confused here. Good. Then let them get confused and let them go ask their parents about it and let their parents, <laughs> you know, explain to them that it is a sexual fantasy and that these things exist in life, like they see violence, okay? It exists in life. It's not a pretty picture necessarily. You know, it's a frightening thing, but it's a reality. Why are we willing to deal with the realities of violence and sexism, and why aren't we willing to deal with sexuality? Why? I mean, the networks won't even play ads on TV that are about condoms, about birth control, about practicing safe sex. We're pretending like we don't have hmm. a lot wow. of teenagers that are having sex in the world right now. What? Why are we, you know, why are we subjecting ourselves to this kind of ignorance? Look, I'll tell you what their answer is going to be to you. They're going to say, you know what, we really are concerned about these issues, and we really are concerned that our children understand them. But quite frankly, it is our job to instruct really? our children, and we don't want you on television in the kinds of ways that you're on television giving those images to our children. Thanks anyway. Well, get, guess what? They're not doing their job because the teenage pregnancies in this country have reached, uh, you know, a highest high. I mean, we have sophomores in high school who are having their second babies already, okay? And the rate of AIDS... <laughs> is raising in the heterosexual community at a really frightening rate, okay? So why is that? These parents are not doing their jobs, you know? There, there is the question, and I guess this is what you're trying to tell me about, that, 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 that you're balancing between an artist's need for self-expression, an artist's yes. need to explore any kind of issue, and then that certainly includes sexuality, mm -hmm. and the responsibility that comes along with the kind of prominence that you have, and the fact that you're a role model for people. And I guess you have to wrestle with that, don't you? The fact that I'm a role model, I have to wrestle with that. Well, that, that there is a responsibility that comes okay. along with your position. Okay, you know what? I, I feel that I'm behaving in a very responsible way. If you, if you say I have a responsibility as a mainstream artist, whatever, I feel that I am being responsible because I am here, as I said at the, at the beginning of the interview, I'm talking about some, the video is displaying people being honest to each other about their sexuality. They're not alienating anyone. They're not degrading anyone. It's about honesty. It's about the celebration of sex. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? And my that is my responsibility. And I'm also very responsible because I do deal with sexuality a lot in my shows and in my music. You know, I promote safe sex whenever I can. I put literature in my albums about birth control and using condoms. I am That's responsible. Yeah. But my point really goes back to that other question, and I'm not suggesting that you're not. I'm just saying that, that you have to ask yourself, or, or do you not, the question, when you go into the studio, mm -hmm. or when you put on your show, you want to be able to explore these kinds of things, because that's what right. art is. But at the same time, you have to reflect on what's going to be responsible. So then, do you say, where do I draw the line, or does it keep going further and further? But I, as I said to you before, I am being responsible. You know, I... Where I draw the line is what I said. I don't believe in gratuitous violence, and I don't believe in degradation. You know, uh, the degradation of any human being, okay? And I, and I would never promote those things in any of my art. You've taken, and I don't. You've taken some heat, I know, and, and, you, and you would like to have a chance to, to talk about it, from, from some women who feel that, that uh, uh, maybe you're not expressing the values that they want feminism to express. For, for all the way from way back when you wore the, the belt buckle that said boy toy, to the material girl video, which they feel reflects old values of women, even if it was satirical, to, to express yourself. Do you have an answer to them? To the feminists? Fem feminists? Who raised that kind of question? Well, 
I would like to point out that they're missing a couple of things because, you know, I may be dressing like the uh, typical bimbo, whatever, but I'm in charge. You know, I'm in charge of my fantasies. I put myself in these situations with men, you know, and everybody knows, uh, you know, in terms of my image in the public, people don't think of me as a person who's not in, in charge of my career or my life, okay? And mm, that's an interesting comment. People don't think of me as a person who's not in charge of my image in my life. Ah, I think that statement is very prolific. All right, let's go. And isn't that what feminism is all about? You know, equality for men and women. And aren't I, aren't I in charge of my life, doing the things I want to do, making my own decisions? I don't think anybody would question whether you're in charge of your own life. I do have a last question for you. What is the next sort of thing that we could be looking forward to? Do you, do you have it in, in mind already? What is, you mean, you want me to promote one of my products? My no, 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 product? no, 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 no. I'm asking. My up and coming button pushing products? No, 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 <laughs> that's not the point. The point is, if you, are you, will you continue to explore sexuality Absolutely. in the fashion that you have? Will you, will you try to carry it a little further in a way that... I, well, I don't know. I can't predict what I'm going to feel artistically. I don't think anyone can, but it is a very important issue to me, and I'm sure I will be dealing with it more in the future. I have no doubt about it. You were kind to talk to us tonight, Madonna. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for listening to me. When we come back, we are going to... All right, look at her. In the video, on the, like she typically does a gracious tone. Um, this interview is different in the sense of it's one of the first interviews where, number one, I've seen Madonna really like defend her work up to this point. I think the Jane Polly interview was the start of that. Um, and this guy, he was smug. Yes, he was smug. He was smug, but not as smug. I don't think it's Jane Polly. Um, but he was very smug and you could tell that he brought on his own biases and preconceived notions about Madonna into the interview. Um, also a first is this is one of the first interviews where I have seen Madonna not really kind of think before she answered like she was really like on spitfire like boom what's another one bam what's another one? bam what's another i'm ready for the next one bam <laughs> so i don't know unless she had like a pen or something in her hand if it, she was already like jotting down her points that she was gonna make or what but even in like her just kind of not even thinking uh, seemingly uh she was on point with her messaging on point stay on point true to her brand i respect that she didn't back down from the video and you know, apologize for it i mean at the end of the day like she said she was a looking girl what she had to apologize for anyway she still made millions right so <laughs> cool um also interesting is i wonder after she became a parent uh what she would have thought about this interview and i guess i'll see that later on um in the journey, would her stance have changed, like, once she had kids? Um, but, I mean, I do agree with her in regards to the labeling portion of it. Like, if you're going to label my video, label all the rest of these videos. Um, yeah, this was very much worth it. Uh, very, very, very good. Um, and, again, I just always appreciate, again, not only that Madonna uh, projected, like, this boss image, but she actually lived it because you have so many artists, especially today, who project like, oh, I'm boss this, I'm boss that. But really, uh, they not. <laughs> anyway, drop the comments below. The first time you saw this interview, what did you think? Did you Were you up re ready for it? Did you miss it? Had to watch it years later on YouTube. Let me know your thoughts. Also, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Yes, I always promote myself. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Hit that red button says subscribe. If you are subscribed, make sure you join the channel. And you like for me to get to suck your choice outside of Madonna. Hit me up on Patreon. That link is below. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. <laughs>